Hi, this is Cindy for um, Monday Craft Videos and what you're going to need today, we're going to make um, two tags. I'm going to make this one and this one. This is a warm uh, tag and this is a cool tag in, the, in our color palettes. Color palettes that have oranges and reds in them and warm greens are warm and uh, color palettes with blues and uh, more of a teal green are a cool palette. So you can see that, that uh, both are very pleasing. So um, this, this one I used with just uh, Distress Inks that w have been out for a while. I used Fired Brick and Gathered Twigs. Well that's a seasonal but you could use any brown and Forest Moss. On this one I used the new seasonal winter inks, the festive berries, the evergreen, and the ice spruce. Okay, so this because this is more of a cool palette. Um, I used the movers and shapers die for this one, and I used the uh, the mini reindeer and 25 movers and shapers for this one. I used the uh, the Christmas backgrounds and borders set for the embossing. I used the large folder. Um, let's see. Use the Tim size tags and some pop dots or some dimensionals. I used a graphic 45 paper. This one for the ornaments and this one, the back of it mostly, for the reindeer and the 25 and then you need some fibers. Oh and I also used icicle stickles on this one. Of course we have our ink applicators. So let's get started. Let's um, do our ink stains first. Um, let's start out with the cool palette because that's the ones I have on my applicators. And we're going to start with the iced spruce. And I'm going to put this all over the tag. But I'm getting the uh, edges first because I want those to be um, more intense and then I'm just kind of scruffing about in the middle leaving a lot of light area because that's where I want my light area to stay. Okay. Next I'm going to go with the Festive Berries. Do the same thing. Not covering all of the iced spruce that we put on. Just a little bit in the middle. And OWSE has I think still five sets of these inks if you haven't gotten yours yet. And they're, they are a really pretty palette. Very uh, nicely retro. They go with the, the retro stamps very well. Robin needs to show you um, tag and that she made with the uh, retro stamps in these colors. Okay, so we've got that on there. Got our three colors on there. Next I'm going to put this in the embossing folder. And I'm going to go emboss it. Unfortunately I don't have enough room on my table where the camera is to emboss in front of the camera. So now we've got these the impressions in our tag. And I started so that I would have the impressions clear up here by the top and and it, you know it, the tag is a little bit longer than the folder. But that's okay because we're going to put something down here to cover that up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in with Evergreen Bow. And I'm going to go over the tag once again because now that we have the impressions then we have 
a resist and we can make those impressions show up and I'm going to do the same with the festive berries and this intensifies and embellishes the, the letters but it doesn't um, our background doesn't get lost and one more time with the ice spruce. See I did these kind of in reverse order this time and I'm going to put that kind of down the middle okay so now we've got our background and I have <laughs> have my little reindeers these, the reindeer that I have and the 25 that I have cut out, okay here we go, I've got a 25 or actually I think those are backwards <laughs> I cut some out and I think they're backwards so we may have to use yeah, let's just use the um, the playing card stock to do that won't have quite the, the um, depth but can get pretty close this is what I used on the other tag and you can see it has the the um, pattern in there but we're going to go ahead and, and use these and it will probably work out just fine so I'm going to start with the uh, the festive berries and I'm just going to put in put you know just dab it on and if you dab it on kind of randomly then you can create a pattern do that right on your craft sheet and then I'm going to come back in again with the evergreen bow and the ice spruce okay now I'm going to put some pop dots for the um, I guess I should say dimensionals for the reindeer we can pretty much use uh, a whole one of these. I'm, these are pretty small but they still um, are too, too large for the 25. So I'm going to put these on and I'm going to put him whoops, ink's wet and it's kind of not wanting to stick so you might want to let these dry a little bit before you stick them on or you'll have problems like I'm having press him down there okay and for the the skinny numbers what you can do is take your sharp scissors and you can cut several of these right down the middle so that they're a lot thinner and put them on the widest parts of your numbers okay let me get a couple more for the two not cooperating huh there we go and I've got one more hanging around here there it is and you put on as many as you think you'll need and then I'm putting these up here and I'm uh, not putting them in a solid line I'm putting one a little higher than the other oops I got to pull off the backing okay almost finished now we're going to take the icicle stickles it's the icicle color 
I'm going to put it on my finger and then I'm just going to rub it around on my deer and on my number and you can make that as sparkly as you want. You can make it not so sparkly or more so. I kind of like to lay it on pretty thick. Okay. And then I'm going to stain a piece of ribbon. Let's see if that's long enough. Yeah, it is. Um, this is a kind of a crocheted lace that I had in my stash. And I'm going to take the festive berries and stain it. Now, if we had a stain with the festive berries, then I would use the stain, but we don't have. If you use um, fired brick or something like that, or, or worn lipstick, then you could use a stain. But I'm just going to use the ink pad. Okay, then you can use glossy accents, um, quick drying glue, tacky glue, just about any glue you want to use. And put a line right there and glue it on. Then once it's dry, you can trim off the edges. Okay. The only other thing that you'll still need to do is to find some fibers to use for your uh, to hang with. And I like this one because it reminds me of the ice spruce. So cut a piece of that one. This one has some of the festive berry and some of the evergreen bough. I'm going to cut that little orange piece off of there. And there. Okay. And let's see. I like to use three. And I may have some trouble finding one that has the right colors for this. Anyway, two will do for now. And you just want to put that into your hole. I use several things to help me get that started into the hole, but for right now the scissors will do it. And then we tie that and you're finished with this one. And this is our cool palette. Okay, now for our warm palette for this one. We're going to start with we're going to use fired brick, um, gathered twigs, and forest moss. So I'm going to switch the pads on my applicators. And there we go. <laughs> I've got a mess up here. So there's my green one. And be careful to hold down your, your Velcro when you do this so you don't pull it all off. Okay, I'm going to start with gathered twigs. And the reason I'm starting with this color is because I want my colors to be toned down. And I'm using the gathered twigs as a toner. That's a, a, a familiar term in the, the uh, painting world. And when you use an earth color, which brown is, because it's a mixture of a lot of colors together, or it's the mixture of two complements together, then it tends to muddy your colors and tone your piece down. So I'm putting that on first as my toner. Then I'm going to come in with the forest moss. Notice I'm leaving some light parts in the middle again. 
around the edges with the forest moss. Come a little bit into the light. Get that green in there. Okay. And last, we're going to do the fired brick. That kind of makes it come to life, doesn't it? And these are, um, this fired brick especially is a pretty intense color, but because I put that brown toner on first, then we've got quite a toned palette. And But we still have a warm palette because our fired brick is warm. Um, well, let's go and uh, um, emboss our tag with the same embossing folder. We'll be right back. There, I'm embossed. And here's my two ornaments. And I'm going to do the same thing I did to the other tag. I'm going to come back in and come in with the, the forest moss and come up over that this embossing to bring it forward. And fired brick. Okay, let me get a little more of that. Okay, now while I have this fired brick out, I'm also going to go around the edges of my ornament. Okay, that uh, serves to tie it all in. Now we can use some bigger dimensionals. And you can uh, use whichever side you want to use on this. Uh, in my other one, I think I used one of each side. And don't really want to do that this time because the, the scene would be upside down. So we'll use that side. And again, be upside down. So we're just going to use both the same size as Santa Claus. And Santa's upside down. Hopefully you'll uh, pay more attention than I did <laughs> right then when you cut, the, cut yours out. So let's go and use some, some bigger dimensionals because we have bigger things to adhere. Okay, and I'm going to put down the big one first. And I'm going to put it at an angle. Let's put the dimensionals on the other ornament. And then we'll put this one on top of the other one with part of it on the tag and part of it on top of the other ornament at a different angle. Then I'm going to take my border lace and I found some that just really matches really well. glue on there. Straighten this out. <laughs> Press it down till it stays. give that a minute to stick so that before I can trim it off and then I've got a mossy um, green piece of yarn I've got some brown and 
also got let's see some other this one I think that's what this one is it's just got a little more green on that piece um, could use this thick piece on there do that there's three kind of like this glittery piece and I think I'll cut it right there where the purple is and down here it's gonna have a little bit of blue on it but I don't think it'll matter too much if you don't like it you know you don't have to use it so again these would be your fibers. I'm going to uh, be sure to let your ink dry a little before putting these dimensionals on. That's the problem I'm having is uh, trying to get the video made uh, without um, making you wait too long to see the finished product. And you could put some uh, sparklies on here, some stickles. I chose not to. Uh, but what I did do on my other one, and it's the roll of this stuff is escaping me right now, is I put a little bit of raffia, just tied a little bow. Not, not anything fancy, but sort of um, primitive on there because this is more of a primitive look. So that's our two tags for the day. I hope you have fun making them. And as always, the um, inks and the dies the embossing folder the, and the glues and things and the stickles can all be found at the OWSE website and I will put some links for these products so that you can go straight to them so thanks for watching and hope you have a good time making tags bye